all this beautiful, all that beautiful analysis we had has had time to stew. It's, it's, yeah. it's, um, I'm not, I'm the, fester. It's a terrible word. Yeah, please don't use that word again. Okay. All right. Take it out of your vocabulary. <laughs> but it's such a good word because it may, nobody likes it. Yeah, no. <laughs> it reminds me of my uncle Fester. <laughs> I know, and it's also what it describes is worse than that. I don't know what your uncle's like, but I'm assuming he's not as bad as Fester. Anyway, um, <laughs> getting into this match, we have a slight lead for uh, Kaveen, but oh! <laughs> we... uh, Two smash attacks? Jump? Make he it three? Jump, but... Okay, now already one thing we are seeing. Those edge guards, the ledge traps, are really, really good for Crash right out of the gate. Oh, but speaking of ledge traps, uh, maybe that was some type of trying to abuse Wi-Fi buffering. Yeah, I mean, so it's a legitimate strategy. If he probably didn't know he had a jump, could have been a, like a grab release like there. I'm not sure if he jumped and got caught. I, I think isn't Mario's grab too low to the ground so his feet would touch? Yeah, he it might have. He might have just touched. All right, anyway. Oh, I'll smash out the shield. Oh, and yeah, catching him right. right there. And two stocks apiece now. So what do you think about, like, how this match is going so far? Um, so... Oh, uh, one thing is that we had that really, really impactful start for, uh, oh, oh my god, that almost did it, uh, but this is, okay, this is what we saw earlier, we were to, oh, PK freeze, that might be it, he has no jump, yeah, wow, yeah, so that's the thing, is that those, the, the edge guards from Crash are just so strong, and the, all right, just let it rip. They're being yeah. answered immediately. This is honestly like that was just a repeat of what we saw. It was a little bit more brutal on both ends, both a more brutal edge guard and a more brutal uh, finish from Kevin. But like at this point, these uh, we we seem to be developing a pattern here. Unfortunately, that pattern has been favoring Crash as he's been taking the first stock consistently. Yeah, it, it just seems like the second. Um, Kevin gets into a rhythm, he's not able to finish it out, and one edge one edge guard, he just loses his stock really early, and then he's like, yo, I'm just gonna take it right away, and then kills him with like a smash attack. But now we're just seeing a lot more percent onto Kevin and a bit more neutral interactions being played. Yeah, but oh that's, that's, not, that's not a neutral interaction you wanted. And this Queen So B. I mean in the last in the first stock, yeah, she took it from that back air, you know, attack at the ledge. But right there, nice stuff from Crash, kind of anticipating that. And rising back... Normally, back air from Mario is pretty safe, but a rising back air like that, where he basically has all of this... He's forced into the hang time once it gets shielded. Uh, yeah, Crash just doing a really nice job. Mainly, I mean, I feel like Crash won at the ledge. Just yeah, kind of. Although Whenever. both players, all the stocks they took were at at or near the ledge. So uh, maybe if we see, we might see a smaller stage, in which case that might be impactful. Let's yeah, see. Uh, smaller stage might be a lot more impactful. It just felt like the second they got to the corner, um, um Queen Bean Mario just couldn't get out um, off the ledge as efficiently. Yeah. All right, now we're seeing a lot more of the neutral interactions already. Oh, nice combos. Yeah. Oh, beautiful combos from Kevin. Just immediately a huge stock. Now, that's something that that is a pace changer. Last yeah. game, like the, it feels like the pace was set immediately by uh, by Crash. And this time around, hmm. No, it's yeah, Kevin's no. turn. Yeah, they're, they're basically just taking turns on like, yo, who's going to mess you up? And now it's Crash's turn to do that. Well, he might not get the chance. I mean, look at this. Kevin has lapped him in percent. That huge combo gave him a massive amount of momentum. And it's interesting. He has the lead. 
but he's still approaching. He's still going into his face. He wants to play the game the way he feels most comfortable doing so. And that means that he's just barely out of range, waiting to whiff punish just like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and just trying to pressure him. And, and I like all right. Once again, stock being decided at the ledge. Just catching the roll onto stage, and that's... This is, I mean, this is a completely different breed of Kivine. I mean, 56% on his first stock, and it <laughs> feels like this Lucas is just once again being taken for a ride. Yeah. Oh, and that was a crazy cape just pushing him to go the other way. Nah. No! Oh my. I thought oh. he died in. No. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Um. <laughs> now here's a question. How much of that game two will factor into game three? Like, uh... I know that that game two was just incredibly decisive. Yeah, look at that. That arrow going down. That was that was Lucas. Um, yeah. but. At the same time, it felt like a big part of that was these big combos that Kivine managed to get, and he was managing to get those consistently in the in uh in that game. But as we move into game three, especially with a stage counter pick for Crash, do you think we're gonna be able to see those combos consistently coming out from him? Yeah. So for Crash, you just need a hard reset. You're like, yo, game two didn't happen. Or like I didn't get bodied as hard. You gotta yeah. just not be psyched out by those. You, you got, you're playing a best of one, you know. Yeah, this is a person you matched up in Elite Smash with, and it's like you just got you just playing. Oh, I don't know if he wanted that down smash, and it cost him some stage positioning. Yeah, yeah. Hey, he might. I know he has done it before, like when he's on a platform. Just to like catch shark, catch a shark, but it just did not work out in that instance. And seventy-one percent. And Mario's the character that just sharks you from below and just gets a massive combo. Yeah. <laughs> and so far, honestly, this game. Oh, but here he's off stage. This is where it was really, really difficult for him in that game one. Oh, beautiful! Oh. The way that he used that PK Thunder, but still was able to hit himself for coverage. Yeah, and now all of a really sudden, smart. yeah, and now all of a sudden, Kevin is the one who's at 108%, manages to get some stage positioning, but goes for a trump, anticipating it, Crash managing to have some stage control, but only for a moment. Yeah, all right. Drop down. Yeah, and using the Mario cape um, as our lunch trump, that's something more unique to Mario, allows allowing him to ledge jump a lot easier if a lot yeah. of people have trouble ledge jumping. Okay, good DI surviving that throw. That's it's, gonna be a that's stock, that's stock, yeah. Yeah. And two stocks uh, apiece. Smashville bring brings back memories, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, one noticeable thing about the fact that that platform is stationary in the middle means that these two, like one of them, like you know, when Crash is playing, he loves to be underneath it. Whoever, it's like kind of a little bit of a king of the hill thing. Yeah, it's just like who can stay on top of the platform, who can be underneath it when they want to be, and yeah. oh, anticipating the air dodge but not actually able to punish it. Now Kevin has stage control once more, and again reads the roll on. All right. Yeah, this time around, so Kevin isn't getting these huge combos like we saw in that game too, but instead he's just changed his game plan up and he's just not getting hit. He's able to, for the most part, avoid being put off stage and with doing this consistent damage, he's managed to maintain a really solid lead now for pretty much since the game started. Yeah, and it's basically gonna be really hard for Crash to like find the kill without it just being like another gimp as he got last time and it seems like the the adjustments have been made and again catching his jump that up smash so deadly for Mario 
all reliable. And... <laughs> Actually, I like the use of Flood. We were talking about how important that being on that center platform is. And so, it might be a good idea if you're Kevin just to throw out the Flood to get him off of it. Yeah, it definitely would be a good idea. Okay. Good weight, knowing he's going to do the PK Thunder 2. Okay, yeah, he's looking for these falling up airs because we've already, as we've already seen, falling up air or up air in general can just be so brutally devastating. And now we're kind of entering end game, possibly, at least for Kevin on 93% and at the ledge. Okay, looks for another roll on, but it seems that Crash has wisened up, not quite going for that anymore, but that's a kind of it's a it's a late adjustment to make. By, because he can't do roll on, he's struggling to get back to center stage. Back throw might do it? No, no, not just barely yet. surviving. I like jumping into the flood, giving him extra height. Finally managed to get him off the uh, back from off stage. And oh, just gets... shot right in between the eyes. And, okay, we were talking before about how Mario can struggle to kill. So now, I mean, for the most part, you know, Kevin has been doing a good job finishing off stocks. And right there, that was some questionable DI. He might have been dead regardless, but it seemed like he DI'd down into the blast zone. Yeah. And Kevin's taking the set right here. And I think we have all our participants for the winner side top eight now cleared up yeah although i i'm not sure who's facing off against whom so that's why we have a bracket salty the winner of this gets to play on the yeah. and that was that was more side. of a uh, it was more of a cue for devin to throw this up so we have yeah! oh man thank you devin